Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Bar Exam Mind podcast. This is Matt Racine, the author of Bar Exam Mind, a strategy guide for an anxiety-free bar exam, and the uh, owner-operator jack-of-all-trades over at barexammind.com. Today I want to talk about what I like to call the three pillars of bar exam passage. Those three pillars are in no particular order of importance because they are all equally important in my opinion. Number one, diligence. Number two, anticipation of conditions. And number three, stress reduction. Let's talk about diligence first. Uh, The definition of diligence that I like to use is that it is the necessity of giving sufficient attention to detail to avoid error and prevail against obstacles. This definition comes from Atul Gawande, who wrote a book called Better a Surgeon's Notes on Performance, which I highly recommend. In any event, um, with the bar exam, you need to commit to continuous and systematic preparation without interruptions and without distractions. For some people, this will be as simple as going to a library or going into your room, studying for three, four hours straight, taking a break, coming back, studying for a few more hours, done for the day. Other people have a bit more difficulty focusing and concentrating. For those people, they're going to have to take some additional steps to uh, remove distractions from their study environment. This will include maybe studying somewhere where there aren't a lot of visual distractions. I know for me, visual distractions are huge. If I see somebody walking by where I'm studying, if I see a, a light flashing, something like that, I get distracted very easily. Uh, I can tune sound out a little bit better, but loud noises uh, distract me as well. Some people, you know, they can study around noise, around visual distractions. And if that's how you are, great. I envy you, uh, you know, study wherever you want. It sounds like you could study at a coffee shop. It sounds like you could study at a restaurant, outside, at the beach, whatever. Just make sure, though, that you truly are able to focus in whatever environment you've chosen to study. If you are switching between reviewing your outlines, staring at someone walking down the street, checking your Facebook, maybe texting somebody, and then going back to your bar exam, you're not really focused. So don't delude yourself. Another aspect of diligence is either following a plan of study or creating your own plan of study. It doesn't really matter what you do as long as you have a plan that's going to cover all the study areas and allow you to practice with those different topics. A lot of people will take a commercial bar exam program and they will have a schedule that they give to you. If the schedule works for you, great, follow it, keep up with it, and don't give it another thought. If the schedule seems too overwhelming for you or if maybe you're working and you need to Uh, revise the schedule to fit your uh, availability, then by all means do it. I I was given the PACE program when I took Barbary uh, for the Oregon bar exam, and I just said to myself, this is crazy, I can't keep up with this. And so I modified it, uh, spent uh, less time practicing during the first couple weeks and more time just reviewing outlines, and then I switched to more practicing as time went on. You know, you just need to make sure you have a balanced study plan and be confident in whatever plan you choose. If you are actually concerned about the plan that you're choosing, you know, you could consider hiring a tutor for a couple of hours to help you devise a program and give you, you know, some perspective that, yes, you can pass the bar exam uh, studying in some way other than the way provided by your commercial bar exam program. The next pillar of bar exam passage is anticipation of conditions. This is my term that I coined a few years ago and what I mean by that is just you know the bar exam is a multi-day affair two or three days depending on what state you're in and it is a many hour affair each day so you need to be sure you've taken practice tests that last for a long time, meaning don't just write an essay here or an essay there, but make sure, you know, maybe once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks, you spend 
three hours straight writing essays or three hours straight doing MBE questions just so you get used to the kind of uh, time pressure you're going to be under and get used to how tiring it is to do that. Taking a test is very different from studying uh, so you just want to be ready for how it's going to feel and how your body and mind are going to react to it. Uh, I think you know one or two full-blown practice test days is probably sufficient for most people as long as you keep up with uh, periodic practice essays and uh, batches of MBE practice questions. So in addition to the endurance aspect of anticipation of conditions you also want to at least spend a few of your practice sessions in less than ideal conditions. And by that, I mean uh, write some practice essays in a really noisy environment. Uh, write some practice essays or write a practice performance test when you are kind of tired, maybe. Do MBE practice questions in, again, a loud environment. Or do it in, in a location where you've never studied before, so it's kind of an awkward place and you're not used to the sensations and the sights and the sounds that you're going to hear. This way, it's you're kind of you're practicing for the bar exam location. You know, you're gonna be around a lot of people. A lot of them are gonna be stressed out. It's gonna be weird noises. You might be in an, you might be sitting in an uncomfortable chair, um, and you don't want to have little things like that uh, be what uh, prevents you from passing the bar exam. Finally, the third pillar is stress reduction, and here just you want to do something that will get you out of thinking about the bar exam for a while um, first off and then second off you want to do some things that will make you confident about your chances on the bar exam so as far as relaxing you know I'm sure you have a way to relax and as long as it doesn't involve substantial quantities of alcohol you know you probably should keep doing that while you study for the bar exam you know if you exercise a few times a week keep that up while you study if you do yoga, make sure you keep up your yoga. Uh, if you like to read books or watch TV at night for an hour or two, keep that up. You can also just go somewhere and sit and stare at a plant or something. Just stop thinking about studying for a little while. Then as far as stress reduction techniques for uh, having more confidence with the bar exam, I would suggest some visualization practice. You know, find yourself a place that, that is quiet where you can relax. And then play through your mind how you're going to walk into the bar exam room and remain calm. Play through your mind how you're going to write a really good essay. You know, let's say at some point during your bar exam studies, you will write a really good practice essay. And once you do that, turn that into a visualization. You know, sit quietly and think through what you did and how it felt knowing all the answers and having everything flow as you were writing and just imagine that several times a week so that by the time the bar exam comes you will the feeling of flow while you're writing an essay will be second nature for you I'll have some links in the show notes to articles I've written about these three pillars and about visualization exercises that you can uh, check out if you want more information about this. Also, uh, I want to tell you that in my book I have two full chapters on visualization that I think are very helpful and seem to be among the favored chapters of people who've read the book. Okay, well that wraps it up for another brief Bar Exam Mind podcast. I hope you've learned something that can help you on your bar exam journey to success. And I want to wish you good luck on the bar exam. Thank you for listening.